What is up, everybody? And welcome back. Welcome back to another edition, another episode of Meet on the 50. Brandon and I took Halloween off. We, we were out there doing stuff. We we're out there handling business, but we are back to break down all the action we saw in week eight. So let's get into it. Let's start the show. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Meet on the 50. And you know what it is. It is our review episode where we break down all the action that we saw this past weekend. And as always, joining me to break down this action, one of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan. Brandon, how you doing? Pretty good. I can say that uh, obviously the emotions are definitely 180 this week as compared to last week. So I'm uh, feeling good. How about you, Jake? I'm doing all right. I can I can definitely say that uh, it's uh, one of us who's feeling the good emotions, just like last week, right? Uh, we had the Niners handle business, and then we had the Bengals flub on Monday night. I'll recover though, but overall solid. Halloween was solid. A great time, great day. Excited to get into this review. Uh, so we're going to get into it. But remember, you can follow along all season with us now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So be sure to check us out there. Adobe Audition has been giving me a few issues, but I promise I did figure it out. So I will pump out the last few podcasts to get them on there. But remember, you can follow along with us all season long. And if at any point you like what you see or hear, do us a favor, right? Just smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, just tap on that bell notification. That way anytime new videos drop or new episodes of the podcast drop, you're right there to consume the content. We're done with the uh, we're done with the office work. Let's get into business, right? So let's put how we did up on the screen. For yourself, nine and six, one and oh on the guaranteed victories. For myself, nine and six, one and oh on the guaranteed victory. Although it was very shaky for my guaranteed victory. And we will talk about that not so much, though, because we all expected it to happen. Overall, for the season that puts us at, for yourself, 67, 55, and 1, 5, and 3 on the guaranteed victories. For myself, 71, 51, and 1, 6, 1, and 1 on the guaranteed victories. We've definitely turned it around, right? We've definitely turned it around since the start of the season, and you love to see it. Let's wipe those off the screen because we got some action to talk about and we're going to get right into the meat of the issue. What we saw yesterday on Halloween. Give me your thoughts on the Bengals and Browns. I mean, it's your standard divisional matchup. Um, it's, you know, it, it's obviously it's not what I thought would happen. Um, I thought that uh, Joe Burrow didn't have a very good game, but, you know, uh, um, I think, uh, you know, just to kind of obviously off topic, but Jason Tatum, they asked him kind of what happened. I know that, you, you know, you guys had a really rough game. You guys blew a lead. And he said, well, um, I had a bad day at work. He said, yep. I mean, how many people have bad days at work? And, you know, I thought you'd do self-reflection. I mean, I have bad days at work. I'm sure you do too. Yep. Um, so Joe Burrow just had a bad, bad game. So um, look for him to bounce back. But yeah, he had, a, he had a rough game. I think not having Jamar Chase out there definitely impacted him. Not Don't know if that would have won them the game because they were getting shut out for most of that game. Uh, give the Cleveland Browns defense credit. It did show up. Uh, Miles Garrett had a good game. The secondary had a pretty solid game. And um, it was too little too late for the Bengals. I know they tried to make a push towards the end of the game, but it's just you got to do that earlier on. So, um, you know, protection wasn't great, but... You know, uh, give the Browns credit. Uh, they definitely surprised me. I didn't think they'd win. But when it comes to divisional games, it's any given Sunday or any given Monday in this case. Yep. You know, the uh, the line looked horrible. The line looked horrible. Um, all the progress that they made in the last four weeks just washed away. Now, like you said, it is a divisional opponent. We're 0-3 in the division. I don't know what the hell that's about. Uh, that is just extremely unacceptable. Uh, extremely unacceptable. Uh, I, I need Joey to trust T. Higgins a little bit more. I need him to trust Tyler Boyd a little bit more on the passes that he normally goes to Jamar Chase to. However, that line needs to play massively better, right? Averaging only three sacks for, through the f last four weeks, four last night through like the second quarter. So it was a rough performance for that line. Um, 
I can't believe we're 0-3 in the division. I, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So uh, hopefully we got all home games, I believe, for the next divisional round, right? When we play the Steelers, Ravens, and Browns again. I'm hoping that we can get wins. We need wins. The, this is ridiculous. So uh, hopefully going into uh, their bye week, right? They have one more week, week nine, and then they go into their bye week. So hopefully they can get a win next week and then go into the bye. But man, that line did not... It didn't look good at all. I was very, very disappointed. Very disappointed in what I saw. Let's look at our early morning game. Now, it looks like all those high knees paid off, right? On that eight hour flight, because it looked, it also, it also takes the donkeys to leave donkey country to get a win, apparently. So uh, I, 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 I don't know what's going on, right? Russ is a walking clown show, in my opinion. But this is my question for you on that game. Treviel on a serious cusp of being a bust. Your thoughts? Um, I think we have to put the pause button on that. Um, you know, I just think that he still needs a little bit more time with the retread team that he's on. Um, I think that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they just make a big trade? They just did get Calvin Ridley. Okay, so that, that'll be another weapon, um, you know, now that you got, uh, uh, you know, Travis Etienne doing his work, um, you know, I think that it's going to take some time. You know, yep. sometimes it takes quarterbacks more than two years. Um, you know, it. I think I think we got to give him, you know, this season. And then if next season we don't see anything, then that's where I'm at. I'm not ready to say he's a bust because certainly if you think he's a bust, then put him on the 49ers because uh, I'll tell you this right now, he would be an MVP candidate if he was on the 49ers. So, um, I just think that, you know, it, it, you, you are what your culture is. I think the culture in that locker room is a little bit depleted, you know, different coaches, different offensive coordinators, different players, um, uh, just kind of a new scheme. Um, you know, I, yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think it's just, I don't, I can't put the blame on Trevor. I don't think that he's a bust. Uh, okay. I like it. You know, I we'll see what happens you know he does make some questionable decisions out there um i do it's we're i i like your pause button but we're getting there we're slowly approaching that cliff i believe uh he does need to pick it up now the revolving door of 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 definitely offensive coordinators right he's already had two head coaches uh three head coaches i guess because urban meyer was fired during the middle of the season last year so three head coaches already so yeah, that is definitely tough. Well, mark, mark my words, Trevor Lawrence is not going to be a bust. So, I mean, you can write that down. You can clip this video. He's not a bust. He's never going to be a bust. 10 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 85, uh, 85 passer rating. He has more yards than Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Garoppolo. So, I I, I don't think he's a bust. Ooh. I don't think those are bust numbers. Okay. I think he has a, a very – I don't think he has a good team. Okay. I like it. I like it. I definitely like the confidence in Trevi. I definitely like the confidence in Trevor Definitely getting a weapon in Calvin Ridley. We'll see what happens when he comes back from that uh, that suspension that he got last year with the ridiculous suspension right. that he got last year. Uh, but adding another weapon for him, that will definitely be big. Yes, I, you know, let's see what happens with uh, Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley, right? Kind of like what you were alluding to uh, in our past episodes with Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins, right? DeAndre Hopkins does make a huge difference for a quarterback. Maybe Calvin really can be that guy for Trevor Lawrence. So we will definitely find that out uh, in these coming weeks because I know Calvin really does come back from suspension uh, pretty soon here, pretty soon. So we'll see what happens and how he integrates with that offense. Now, moving on to our morning, our traditional morning games, right? Because that was our early morning game. Now we got our traditional morning games. Not too many things to talk about here, right? We got the Falcons and the Panthers. They gave us a show. Cowboys dominated yet again. The Jets do what they have done. Third consecutive times which is just lose to the Pats Zach Wilson also looked horrible right he looked like rookie Zach Wilson Dolphins I mentioned it in the beginning almost blew my guaranteed victory but pulled off the comeback against the Detroit Lions who are just not good not a good football team my two questions for you from the morning game just announced today the Detroit Lions have traded TJ Hawkinson to the Minnesota Vikings. So with this addition, how real are the Minnesota Vikings? I mean, they're as real as Kirk Cousins can take them. I mean, is they're real as, as good as Kirk Cousins is? I think it doesn't depend on, you know, Hawkinson or, you know, um, as far as 
Dalvin Cook. We know these people, yep. you know, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, barring injury, he does get banged up a little bit, but yep. um, the defense is solid. The, there's no question that the the Minnesota Vikings are a legit team and one of the best, most stacked rosters in the NFL. It all comes down to the jersey you're wearing. It all comes down to Kirk Cousins. He, they are going to go as far as Kirk Cousins takes them. So if Kirk Cousins can have an efficient game where he's, um, you know, does really well and doesn't turn the ball over and doesn't make stupid mistakes, they're capable of winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. But the I question like mark is, is Kirk Cousins going to do that? And so we don't know. Um, I know that he's been in the league for quite some time. Um, and, you know, he's won a playoff game. So you got to give him credit there. Yep. There's uh, other quarterbacks that have been in the league just as long who haven't won a playoff game. So, um, you know, he's he's a, he's a been playing very well this season. Um, I would say that, you know, him and Jimmy Garoppolo are very neck and neck as far as what they can give you. And so, but there are some limitations there. And so everybody's got to play well around you, which is number one. But number two is you've got to show up. So yep. like I said, I think you can add anybody that you want to the Vikings, including Odell Beckham Jr., including Christian McCaffrey, whoever you want. It still all comes down to, it's the same thing with the 49ers. You can win a Super Bowl yep. if Jimmy Garoppolo or Kirk Cousins can show up. And that is the big question mark. I, you know, I like it. I think he hit the nail on the head, right? The Vikings are going to go as far as Captain Kirk takes them. Uh, and we'll see, right? They, they're they an interesting team because I, I do think that for the Vikings to do it all, to win it all, yes, the pieces all have to fall the right way, right? Because Kirk cannot have a bad game. That's, I mean, that's really, that all really needs to be said, right? The Minnesota Vikings are going to go as far as Kirk Cousins takes them. Right. That's basically it. So I know you have alluded to it before, and I guess you could throw the Vikings in this kind of uh, this category here, but do you think that the Philadelphia Eagles are the 2008 Kerry Collins led Tennessee Titans, or do you think that they have a legit chance to compete this year? I think they have a legit chance to compete this year. I think that they're a little bit different than the 2008 Kerry Collins led Titans that went nine or 10 and zero that season. Although it was impressive. You were kind of just waiting to see like, when are they going to get exposed? Kind of yeah. how I felt that year this year. I, I mean, they, it's taken me a little bit of time, but they're, you know, they're starting to gain my respect Yeah, because each Sunday they are showing up and the defense is showing out. Um, I do think that this is another case of, this is as far as, you know, I think it all comes down to the quarterback again. How is Jalen Hurts going to perform under the under the pressure of a playoff game? Because that atmosphere is different. We've seen a lot of quarterbacks in the past get to the playoffs. And when they do get to the playoffs, it's a totally different story. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious to see how he does, but they are a legitimate contender. I like it. Yeah, the Philadelphia Eagles, super impressive this year, right? Nick Sirianni, right? Second year with the team. Jalen Hurts, his growth and development as a quarterback. A.J. Brown, how stupid do the Tennessee Titans look? I mean, holy moly, man. Uh, you got Devontae Smith there. They added another weapon. Uh, and Robert Quinn with that trade recently. So, I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles are doing the things that they need to do to put themselves in contention. And they're not just sitting back riding the coattails of being undefeated. They're actually going out there and pursuing to get better. So the Philadelphia Eagles, I agree with you. I think they're the real deal this year. And I think that if you're not if you're not careful, the Philadelphia Eagles, they could possibly go all the way. So let's watch out what happens the rest of the season, right? We're about to get to the halfway mark. We'll talk about that in our next episode. But uh, uh, we're about to get to the halfway mark with week nine, and then we'll do our midseason grades. But... We'll see what happens. You know, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, very impressive. They got a short week this week, so we'll see what happens with the Philadelphia Eagles, but I agree with you. Philadelphia Eagles, super, super impressive so far. Moving on to the afternoon games, right? T Titans did what they did what we thought they were going to do, right? They, well, we thought they were going to win. They thought, we thought they were going to dominate. They squeaked by the, ten the, the Houston Texans in Malik Willis's first NFL start, and it was not a pretty start at that. So we'll see what happens there. If Ryan Tannehill is out again, or if Malik Willis comes back to be the starter, right? Washington dumpster fire commanders did what we predicted. And although it came down to the very end, the mini horses could not hold on. But the two games that I want to touch on is of course, 
Your Niners moving to 8-0. Sorry, sorry. 9-0 with the CMC trade that, if you were watching the game, paid off more than ever this week. Your thoughts on the game? Well, I mean, you know, I thought that we would win in this fashion. I did not think so. Um, the reason, here's why. I mean, not having Debo Samuel, your most versatile weapon out there, um, that's tough. I mean, it's it's always good to have him just, just for schematics and different reasons, just to have him out on the field. Just his presence, just alone. Um, you know, just the threat of him doing a fly sweep or the threat of him getting a cross route or the threat of him running the ball. Um, it, it changes how a defense has to prepare for you. Um, and then, you know, with the lackluster play of Mike McGlinchey and the offensive line struggling lately, um, not having Eric Armstead, not having, um, you know, Traverius Ward for some snaps, not having, um, you know, mostly, um, you know, Jimmy Ward being limited with that broken hand, no use check. There was a lot of question marks going into this game. So, um, you know, to, to, you know, obviously I'm going to pick my team, but I thought it was going to be very close. Yeah. Um, I did not think that we were going to shut them out in the second half and score 20, outscore them in the second half, 21 to zero. Yeah. Um, obviously that's thanks to Christian McCaffrey. I mean, this guy came out and he did his thing. Yep. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it goes to show that, man, it just seems like his, he was very limited in Carolina. I mean, now that, um, he has a great offensive coordinator. Yeah. And he has a pretty good run blocking line. I mean, Aaron Banks leading that, or leading the charge second year. Um, um, I believe it's, I think it's left guard or I'm trying to remember, but Aaron Banks is incredible. He's been blocking very well. I think he's the new left guard. And then with Trent Williams coming back, you have a really good left side. And we saw him make like some it. really good runs on the left side of the ball. We saw him pass a touchdown. We saw him do the triple crown first time that anybody did it since the Danny and Tomlinson yeah. in his yeah first real start because last <laughs> week he was limited i feel like this was his first real start because yeah. he had the full playbook at his disposal so yeah. um my thing is is i expect um you know more from him um but yeah we just own the rams we just do i mean unfortunately we didn't win the one game that counted it slipped right through jakowski tarts finger fingertips uh, uh his butter fingertips but we know Joukowsky Tart is not on an NFL team, and we know why he's not rostered, because when you blow the biggest play ever, and you pretty much prevent a Super Bowl, because I'm sorry, Jake, if the 49ers would have went to the Super Bowl, I do think we would have beat the Bengals. That's for another story. But at the end of the day, they just can't beat us. Can't. They can't. Yeah. You know, the, the Niners look great, right? Christian McCaffrey looked incredible, right? And I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if Kyle Shanahan just, just like pays somebody to go take the Rams playbook before every time they play him. Uh, but the Rams cannot do anything against the 49ers. I mean, really anything, right? Uh, it really took that, that interception, right? That muffed interception, basically, to really push them over the hump, right? But the Niners, man, we'll see what happens. This definitely, I think, resets kind of the season for them if Christian McCaffrey is able to stay healthy, if that team is able to stay healthy because they were able to do all of this without Debo Samuel, so he wasn't even on the field. And, and, so. and big shout-out, and, and big shout-out to Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I mean, obviously, he's had inconsistent yeah. numbers, but he went 21 for 25. He had um, over game. 200 passing yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. I know, even granted, there was a, uh, a ball that he threw that could have been intercepted by Jalen Ramsey. But I definitely will give him an A. He, he played well on Sunday. Yeah, he definitely, I mean, he had to have a bounce back performance, right? That's what we kind of talked about in our last review episode. He definitely needed a bounce back performance. And he gave you that, right? He gave every, all the Niners fans what they were looking for, which was a kind of prototypical Jimmy G performance against the Rams where he kind of goes in there, does his thing, gets the ball, moves the ball around, and basically kind of protects the ball. Did have some questionable passes there. Jalen Ramsey did did miss a few opportunities, but that's on Jalen Ramsey. That's not Jimmy G there. So, uh, Niners, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Niners kind of reset their season with this trade. So I'm curious to see uh, what happens the rest of the year. Now, the other team that we got to talk about, and I can't believe we're going to talk about this team, Seattle and the Geno Smith-led Seahawks seem to be, and, and I, like I said, I can't believe it, the real deal. 
right? Aside from the rivalry, how are we feeling about Seattle this year? I mean, they're playing better than they're expected, but I still feel like they're paper tigers. I still okay. feel like, I mean, I think the New York Giants maybe got a little bit exposed. Okay. Um, they were playing okay. well and they were kind of rolling for a little bit there, but I mean, I can give Seattle some credit. They're definitely better than I thought they were, but I still don't think that if they get to the play, I mean, let's just say hypothetically speaking, they get into the playoffs. I still think they get bounced in the first round. There's okay. been nothing that I've seen where I'm like, hey, Seattle's a wonderful team. I think they're doing really well in the regular season. I think, you know, they're five and three. Um, but I think when they played the 49ers, they lost. Like I don't even think, I don't know if they scored a point. So yeah. I'm just saying, um, we'll have to see. I'm going to be interested when we play them again. But um, obviously, they, they've been looking better than I thought. But I still, I'm still a little bit, uh, I'm cautious. Not sold. Them. Not yeah, sold. Okay. I'm not sold on them. And okay. I'm still kind of, I got them, they're, they're, they're kind of on my radar now a little bit, okay. but um, we'll have to see how they play against their divisional opponents. We'll have to see how they play next week, and we'll have to see how they play against the Rams. I think that'll tell, be the tell-all, be-all, just because um, it's it seems like at this point in time, early in the season, or halfway through the season, it is going to be a battle between them and the 49ers for the NFC West. Yeah, you know, Seahawks are playing well. Geno Smith is playing well. That team has definitely come together um, more than we had initially anticipated them coming together. So we'll see what happens with Seattle. But I like what you said, right? I do believe it's going to be between the Niners and the Seahawks. Um, obviously, uh, that division is really a crapshoot. I mean, anybody can kind of come out of nowhere, I believe, in that division. But right now, as it stands, I do believe it right now it's between the Seahawks and the 49ers. Still plenty of football to be played, though. Still plenty of football. Yes. And the last game that we're going to talk about is the team that, I mean, at this point, if they don't win the Super Bowl this year, not only would it, would it just fall very in line with their history, uh, I would view it, I believe you would view it as a major disappointment, disappointment and quite honestly, just a huge failure. Your thoughts on the, I mean, I don't know what, what words we can say about them, the impressive Buffalo Bills and the amazing Josh Allen. Yeah, you know, when it comes to picking a Super Bowl winner, as I've, you know, gone through the years and watched NFL year by year, year by year, and just every single time, it's it's always something that's unexpected for me. It's any given Sunday. And okay. when we're talking about the playoffs, <clears throat> it is a tournament. So True. it is a single game tournament. It True. is not like, okay, I'm this year, I think the Warriors are going to win the finals and and if they do, then it's not surprising. It's, you know, generally the people who I think are going to win in the NBA usually have a much better chance because you're having to beat that opponent four times out of seven. Very true. Whereas all it takes, all it takes is Ryan Tannenhill and Derrick Henry to go off and all of a sudden you won a 2017 game in Buffalo and you don't know what happened. So the um, way I look at it as is, that they should become out as the best team um, in the regular season. You would hope that they get far in the postseason. Expecting them to win to the Super Bowl is um, that's kind of a stretch. Okay. I would not be surprised if they got bounced. I would not at all. So, uh, but the expectation is that, that they at least get to the AFC Championship game. So, if they don't get there, then there's some major question marks. Um, you should be able to at least win one or two games in the playoffs. Um, you know, winning four in a row is hard. Yep. If you're playing against NFL teams. A lot of things have to happen. There's 53 players. I mean, when you're comparing it to like yeah. basketball, you got five people on the court. You got yep. 10 people on your team. Football, everything has to go right. Yep. So you got 11, you got special teams, you got this. So a kicker could ruin it for you. True. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, Buffalo, they're incredible. I put them up there with the upper echelon teams as far as Kansas City, Philadelphia. Those three are the juggernauts, in my opinion, at this point in time. I think you would be, it would be kind of disappointing if one of those three teams didn't win it because of how good they are. But um, yeah, I mean, Buffalo is good, but there was a game. I, I can't remember who they played, but I know they lost that game and I was starting to question them a little bit. So 
The Buffalo Bills, I, you know, I like everything that you said, right? We will see. We'll see what happens, right? When it comes to the postseason, right? When it comes to the playoffs, right? Like you said, anything can happen, right? A miss kicked, a miss block, a penalty. We've seen it all, right? We've seen yeah. it all happen. We've seen a fumble end people's chances. We've seen a missed kick. We've seen an offsides. We've seen everything. Penalties, yeah, you're right. With D4, the offside, yep. it took it took a, a, a Super Bowl chance away from the Chiefs. So, yep. hey, we, that's- We've seen uh, it all. Everything has to go right. It's true. It's true. I like I like what you said. And you I gotta have some agree. luck. You have to have some luck. You gotta have some luck in there. Let's see if the Buffalo Bills have luck this year uh they have been waiting for it for a very long time so obviously i think both of us would love to see it but yeah, would, yeah. Like what you said right it's a crapshoot right it really it, it is any given sunday so i'm excited to see what happens the rest of the season but we got more weeks ahead of us and we got more breakdowns in front of us so we are going to get to those but that is going to do it for this week's review episode and looking at the schedule right with that additional week added week nine is actually our halfway point right 17 weeks that count on the record 18 weeks on the schedule no complaints from us over here so we will do our mid-season grades for you next week right when it is actually our halfway point when teams when we actually kind of see what is going on right so still one more week technically till we get to halfway cough cough Bengals, get your shit together, right? Sorry, sorry, something in my throat there, right? So we will push that back a week, but you know what I always like to tell you. Brandon and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our videos, right? Whether you're a new viewer, returning viewer, we just want to thank you for taking the time to watch our breakdowns, our analysis, all that good stuff. Do us a favor, check us out on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, where we upload all of our uh, video episodes to there in the podcast form. and do us a favor. The best way you can help us out, the very best way you can help us out is by smashing that like button, smashing that subscribe button, just tapping on that bell notification. That way anytime new videos drop, you're right there, right there to consume the content, right there to consume the podcast, because we're going to be dropping content for you all season long. That is going to do it for our week eight review episode. All that's left is our week nine picks episode and we will get there. We'll see you on Friday, but that is going to do it. That is one of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan. I am Jacob Cubs, the fantasy guy. And until Friday, Brandon and Jake are out. Go be